So there are many types of chromatography. So we're going to check out some of the most common ones specially used in separation processes. So here it goes and I separate them into the four main different separation or absorption mechanisms, either by surface absorption, by partition, by ion exchange, or by size exclusion. So the first one will be surface adsorption. The separation mechanisms will depend upon the differences in polarity between the species or the different components in the feed. The more polar a molecule, the more strongly it will be adsorbed by the polar stationary phase. And of course, we are assuming that the stationary phase is polar because if it were the reverse, then the reverse will be true. If the stationary phase will be a non-polar material, which is not likely to occur, but if you find some case, then the non-polar molecules are going to be sticking to the stationary phase. And therefore, the more non-polar molecules, they will, they will keep strongly into the solvent. They will not interact that high or that importantly into the stationary phase. And what you're going to see is that the level is going to increase. So let it be very simple. You have these molecules. Some molecules will be interacting strongly with the stationary phase. So they will not go all the way to this height. Some material will be middle, but you will find eventually some materials that are actually not keeping or sticking into the solid, uh, solid surface. So that's why the solvent will carry it all the way to the top. Partition chromat chromatography. Unique to chromatography is the liquid supported or the liquid bonded solids. Here, the mechanism is absorption into a liquid. So as you can imagine, we are going to have another type of interaction. It is also referred to as a partition mode of separation or partition chromatography. With mobile liquid phases, there is a tendency for the stationary liquid phase to be stripped or dissolved. Therefore, the stationary liquid phase has to be chemically bonded to the solid bonding support. Now, let me explain it very clearly that we are actually using this liquid as our servant material. The problem here, well, not, let's say not the problem, but by design, this liquid is already supported into a solid and this is done so it is fixed because otherwise you will have a solvent which mixes and it's very chaotic. So what we're doing here is adding a solid material so the uh, stationary phase can bond to this solid phase. The ion exchange chromatography, as you can remember from previous lectures, ion exchange will interact with cations and anions. The stationary phase consists of a insoluble porous resinous material containing fixed charge carrying groups. Counter ions, and remember these from previous lecture guys, if you missed the ion exchange lecture, I will definitely recommend it because it not only comes handy here, but you're going to encounter these later on in other type of separation processes and in biochemistry and in proteins and so on. So better take out that of the way. Counter ions are those ions that are of opposite charge, so they will counterbalance the loss or gain of charge. Passage of liquid mobile phase is going to occur in the column. Contains ionized or partially ionized molecules of the same charge. These act as the counter ion through the system. So, well, let me finish with these little points and we're going to see how this works in this graph. This acts as the counter ions through the system. This results in the reversible exchange of these ions. So you have one exchange for another exchange. The degree of affinity between the stationary phase and the feed ions dictate the rate of migration. Hence, degree of separation between the different solid species can occur. So here we go. So let it be that this is our column, our chromatography column, which is going to be based in ion exchange. You can see all these materials are a gel or contain a kind of area which is possibly positively charged. Now we have, as you can see here, guys, our material, which is going to be dissolved in a solution. 
we are going to pass that solution either by pumping it or simply by gravity and as you can see guys we are going to be able to separate them due to their affinity in the first case the positive ions are going to go very fast why because positive and positive will repel each other meaning that they will not stick between each other they will go fast now the interesting part right here is the negative solvent or the negative species they do have interaction with the column they are going to stick to the positive uh, side so they will take longer than the positive ions so you will be able to specify maybe some times at time one to two you get positive material and at time two to three you get negative material and finally we got to the size exclusion chromatography which for me is a very straightforward approach it's almost like a filter or a sieving system it is also known as gel permeation chromatography molecules of a feed material are separated essentially by their size or molecular weight so typically molecular weight is mostly associated to size the stationary phase is going to be a porous cross-linked polymeric gel the pores of the gel vary in size and shape such that the large molecules tend to be excluded by the smaller pores and they will start moving preferentially with the mobile phase so here we have it we have three sized molecules the cyan or light blue color ones are the smaller one you can say that these are the smaller or lightest of all then we have green molecules which are standard and then we got the red molecules which are the heaviest one and what we're going to do is simply drop these materials through this column which is a size exclusion chromatography system what you're going to encounter is that according to their sizes the size will allow certain material to go faster and slower to other ones and probably you're wondering why slower the smaller ones typically you will see the smaller ones to go first rather than the large one i don't know if you see here guys but actually you have little pores right here which will stop the smaller size so the smaller sizes will go in out they take longer they can go here and here so the overall setup or size is longer path therefore longer time to go from the top to the bottom on the other hand the red ones have no possibility to go inside so they're going to just keep the straightforward approach and the green ones well those are interesting in some cases they will be able to pass through but in some other cases will not be able to pass through so that's the middle point the smaller molecules are able to diffuse into and out of the small pores as these are stated here this will thus be retarded in the system the very smallest molecules will permeate the gel pores to the greatest extent that's what i was telling you guys this will thus be most retarded by the system the components of a mixture therefore will elute in order of decreasing size of molecules and weight and it's very important to go back we're talking about a porous cross-linked polymeric gel meaning that there is no interaction between charges polarity and any type of interactions are almost assumed to be negligible compared to the ion exchange column right here here the charge is very important in this specific case size is the one that it's actually important 